Welcome to part two of week two. In part one, I left you with a set of three questions. Now in this part, I will start to answer the first of these questions. Why is there a difference in membrane, a difference in potential between the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell? Now in order to answer this question, we have to remember that the cell is surrounded by a membrane. Embedded in the membrane, there are ion channels and ion pumps. Ion pumps push sodium ions from inside the cell towards the outside. Therefore, we have a difference in concentration between the inside of the cell and the outside. At the same time, these ion pumps transport potassium from the outside of the cell to the inside. I will argue that the difference in concentration necessarily gives rise to a difference in potential. Now, to or in order to understand why, let us look at the case of air molecules. You all know that in the high mountains, the air is thinner than in the valleys. The concentration or density of molecules decreases as we move up the mountain. The reason is that air molecules have a certain mass, they have a weight, and pushing them up you have to work against the gravitational forces that try to pull the molecules back towards the ground. On the other hand, because of a finer temperature, air molecules move around. And at equilibrium, there are always a few air molecules high up in the air, but most of them are down at the bottom. The density decreases with elevation. It decreases very generally with energy. Now for our air molecules, the energy is the gravitational energy, which is higher, the higher the molecules are up in the air. For the case at hand, we talk about ions, sodium, Na+, potassium, Ka+, are positively charged ions. For positively charged ions, where Q is the charge, the energy corresponds to the charge times the potential. So, if there is a gradient in potential, the potential increases up here, then positively charged ions are unlikely to sit at the region of high potential. Rather, they want to fall down to the region of low potential. The dependence upon the energy is exponential. This dependence is called the Boltzmann distribution, and I will now show that from the Boltzmann distribution you can derive how a concentration difference gives rise to a voltage difference. So let's start from the Boltzmann distribution and note that the energy for charged particles is Q times U. Let's look at sodium. Ion pumps push sodium outside the cell. So the density of sodium is much higher outside the cell than it is inside the cell. If we compare the density or concentration inside to that outside, we can do this by using the Boltzmann formula. So I have e to the minus e over kT. K is the Boltzmann factor, T the temperature. e to the minus e over kT. Now here it's N1, it's the inside energy 1, outside energy 2. The ratio of exponentials can be written as 
a difference e1 minus e2. Now I use the expression for the energy of charged particles and find q over kt u1 minus u2. Let's take the logarithm. So the logarithm of n1 over n2 is minus q over kt u1 minus u2. I'm interested in the voltage difference delta u, u1 minus u2, and if I solve for u1 minus u2, I have minus kt over q logarithm n1 over n2. u1 is the potential inside the cell, u1, u2 is outside the cell, n1 is the concentration inside the cell, n2 is the concentration outside the cell. The relation between these ratio of concentrations The concentrations inside and outside and the voltage difference this ratio is described by the equation I just derived which is called the Nernst equation. Let me summarize. The ion pumps cause a concentration difference the concentration difference gives rise to a voltage difference which is described by the Nernst equation and this voltage difference is also called the reversal potential. Now let's discuss the meaning of this. The Boltzmann distribution describes an equilibrium distribution so in the same way, this voltage difference corresponds to a hypothetical equilibrium. There are more sodium ions outside the cell than there are inside. The sodium ion channel, the sodium ions outside and inside would be at equilibrium if there were a potential difference delta u between the inside and the outside. But, they are, but sodium is not the only type of ion. There is also potassium. Potassium ions also have a different concentration inside than outside. For potassium, there is also a voltage derived from the Nernst equation and that this voltage potassium ions would be at equilibrium given the concentration difference caused by the ion pumps. However, the results of the hypothetical equilibrium potential for potassium and the hypothetical equilibrium potential for sodium is not the same. But there can be only one single difference in potential between the inside and outside. The Nernst equation gives you the hypothetical equilibrium potential, which is also called the reversal potential for each ion type. The total equilibrium potential is a compromise between the reversal potential of sodium, potassium and other ion types that you might find in the cell. To summarize, the concentration difference gives rise to a voltage difference via the reversal potential. This 
voltage difference is described by the Nernst equation. It's specific for each ion type. For each ion type, we have a reversal potential, which is the poten potential at which this ion type would be at equilibrium. Now, in order to get you a little bit more familiar with the notions I just discussed, I would like you to take five minutes or so, take out a calculator, type in concentrations for sodium and potassium, and try to calculate the reversal potential for each ion type. An additional question is, how would this calculated reversal potential change if you go from a temperature of 37 degrees to half that temperature?